my starting point here is that uh, it's a fairly uh, obvious statement that the possibility of moving goods over space creates spatial linkages among places that are potentially very far, right? So productivity increases in China 5%, that's thousands of miles away, and things in DC become cheaper, but some workers in the Rust Belt may need, need to find another job. Uh, or, uh, you know, US joins NAFTA and some producers in Brazil need to find another buyer. So spatial linkages are, are uh, you know, uh, uh, fairly important uh, determinant of local outcomes. Uh, obviously, the, uh, consequent, the local consequences of any of these changes depend on other things as well, right? Uh, uh, for example, uh, um, what happens in, in Washington DC versus what happens in Arlington may depend on uh, uh, how important the industry that is changing is for the type of economic activity that is going on in DC versus the one that is going on in Arlington, right? And we call that input-output linkages. Uh, another thing that could be going on is that uh, local labor markets may be more or less integrated via commuting linkages and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, so in that sense, the spatial spread of any given shock may be more or less uh, concentrated. So uh, why is any of this important for what we're talking about uh, here today? Well, because to the extent that the desired expenditure of residents in Arlington on leather or on food changes, to the extent that the desired expenditure of firms in the Rust Belt on coal or on chemical changes, uh, this is also going to impact the demand for transportation services of stuff to Arlington or of stuff to these firms in the Rust Belt, right? And so uh, what I want to show you today is uh, 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 an exploration, basically, of the impact of changes in the international environment on local communities, on the expenditure on local communities, and uh, you know, as a consequence on the demand for transportation services, when you take into account the linkages that I've been uh, mentioning in this uh, uh, introduction. So to do that, I'm gonna uh, build on, on recent research that I've been doing on uh, trade and uh, local labor markets. Uh, I'm gonna focus uh, as an example uh, on the consequences of uh, the Chinese economy's increasing productivity by 5%. Uh, to give you a sense, this is a fairly small number. 5% was the increase in TFP in China in one year in the last, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the first decade of, the, of this uh, uh, century. And I'm gonna ask, uh, after I run this simulation through, what are the consequences of these changes on expenditure on any county in US? Okay, and that means also on the demand for transportation services in any county in the US and across uh, sectors if you take all these linkages into account. This is work in progress in the sense that I will be able to show you maps of what are the changes. I will be able, I will, I will uh, be less able to tell you why any single change is actually occurring, right? A little bit, that's because these are all general equilibrium forces that are gonna be in place, so separating them is always a little harder conceptually, uh, uh, and a little bit be I, because I just didn't have time to get there and, and, and evaluate the main components, okay? Um, so, um, so where do I keep track of time? Where do I keep track of time? Uh, you watch Jeff. You? I watch Jeff, all right, perfect. Okay, so let me give you a sense of what's in the model. Uh, so this, this is a model that uh, uh, represents U.S. with 3,000 counties. There are 38 foreign countries in the rest of the world. Each economy is, uh, um, has 29 uh, sectors that cover the whole economy in each, in each country. Uh, product market linkages are going to come in the form of input-output linkages and in the form of international trade and intranational trade. So goods can be shipped from China to Europe or from China to any U.S. county or from a county in Texas to a county in Michigan, right? Uh, uh, labor market linkages are going to come in the form of commuting linkages across U.S. counties. To calibrate this model, there are several data sources that I use. Uh, I won't talk to them. Uh, I won't talk about them uh, now. The, uh, I do want to talk about what are the main linkages, okay, that drive the results in this in this model. And basically, uh, what's going on in this model is that there's a, an expenditure in a sector S in a county D. Okay, so the demand of uh, uh, leather products in Arlington. And that demand comes obviously from two sources. It comes from demand from final consumers, and it comes 
from uh, uh, the demand of other firms that use uh, these products as intermediate inputs, right? And so, uh, you know, in principle, anything, any change in the rest of the world that impacts those two terms will have an impact on the demand for transportation services of leather products to Arlington, right? And this is what's going to move, uh, uh, what's going to move the, uh, the model. So what I want to do is I want to unpack a little bit those two terms and show you empirically how important they are, okay? And then after I'll show you that, I'll, I'll show you the results of some, uh, 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 or some simulations. Um, so let me start with the, with the labor market. It's a little hard to see here, but uh, let me start from the labor market. So that's, uh, uh, I'm going to mainly refer to the income of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of workers, okay, of income of, let's say, residents in Arlington. So when something uh, 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 in, the, in the rest of the world changes, income in a particular community may change. Uh, because uh, uh, the wage that they get where they work may change, or because they change where they work, right? And so that's the second equation uh, in the bottom there that says that the total income of residents in Arlington obviously depends on how many people live there, but it also depends on where they work and on the fraction of people that live in Arlington and work anywhere else, right? And uh, if you were here last year, you may remember this picture. This is a picture that shows you where uh, uh, are residents in Arlington working, okay? And 30% of them are working in Arlington, so they don't commute too much. Uh, uh, I think it's, uh, no, actually, I can't see the number. If you can, congratulations. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, so what's the fraction in BC? 34. 34, I remember it was higher, uh, right? And 22 work in Fairfax County. So uh, uh, the, the, the point of this map is to show that things that happen on the left of the map may still be impacting labor market outcomes on the right of the map via labor market integration, okay? And this is a, a feature of many uh, uh, local, labor, local labor markets. So that's about uh, uh, consumer's income. Uh, uh, the other piece that I, that I emphasize is uh, input-output linkages, right? And uh, a simple way of, of showing you this is to just look at two sectors in US and ask where, which type of inputs they, they buy, right? And so uh, for mining and querying, if I remember correctly, 19% of their total expenditure falls on renting machines or on financial intermediation, right? Uh, that's very different from what happens in chemicals and chemical products. I think 38% of the expenditure of chemical products is on other chemical products, right? And to, to produce some chemical products, you need some other chemicals, and that's a feature of input-output tables that is uh, very present, especially when the sectors are, are this much uh, aggregated. Now, what's the point of this graph? Well, the point is, uh, if because of some reasons, financial intermediation services become more expensive or less expensive, uh, these two sectors are going to be impacted differentially, right? Because financial intermediation services are much more important for mining than they are for chemicals, right? And so this also means that places where mining is very important are going to be impacted more than places where chemicals are very important if financial intermediation services prices change, right? And this is where the input-output linkages uh, 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 come from, come, uh, come, into, come into play. Uh, the last piece I want to... I want to show is uh, uh, the international and international trade uh, piece, and that's the last uh, term in the, in the main equation that I showed you uh, at the beginning. We were talking about uh, uh, financial services. Let's, let's keep talking about that. So what's the demand of financial services in a particular place? Well, that demand is going to come from all the industries that are active in those places, and their demand of financial services, right? So suppose the mining sector is very active in a particular in a particular location, uh, uh, then that's that. When I say very active, I mean revenues are very high. This means expenditure in that location on this financial service is going to be very important. Now, where are the revenues of this mining sector coming from? Well, they are coming from wherever other places buying these mining products, right? And this is where international trade or international trade come into play. The second equation. Uh, below there so it says that the revenues in the mining sector in a particular place will come from whoever is buying those products anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world and the expenditure that these other places have, okay? And so changes in expenditure in any other place in U.S. on mining services will impact the revenues of the mining sector in any particular place, and this will impact the demand of transportation services for all the sectors that are active there, okay? And so th th what I want to emphasize in this, uh, uh, in this equation is that this expenditure here, okay, is, has an, has a, for, for a particular place, I, has an equation which is like this in any other place, okay? 
Thank you. And this is and this is and this is a way of saying that international and intranational trade uh, uh, basically link all the all the locations together uh, um, uh, via the movements of goods. In fact, and this is uh, this is what I was telling at the very uh, at the very beginning, right? Uh, now, is this important uh, in the data? This is obviously important. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, mining and querying expenditure in US, 64% of those purchases are purchases of mining and querying products that come from US, right? So this is a sector that is relatively little traded. If you ask uh, 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 the same question for the leather and leather product sectors, 29% of the expenditure on leather product sectors falls on products that come from China, right? And 14% of those, uh, that's the second largest, come from Italy. Uh, the number is low, but I'm Italian. I can tell you quality is very high. Uh, and, uh, uh, but you know, the importance of trade is very different for these different sectors. And, uh, and, uh, and I guess this is the point I wanted to make. So I've emphasized three mechanisms. Uh, one is uh, local labor markets. Another one is input output linkages. A third one is, is the movements of goods and trade in, uh, uh, in general. Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, sort of um, show you what happens in this model uh, after you take into account of these linkages uh, when one particular change happens in the rest of the world. Okay, and I'm going to focus on an increase in the uh, productivity of the Chinese economy, uh, uh, 5%. I told you this is a relatively small number. This is what would happen in one year. Uh, and uh, I'm going to focus on some sectors that are important for the Chinese economy, like the leather sector, and some sectors that are important for the uh, U.S. railroad industry. And uh, the mapping between the sectors I have and the STCC, STCC uh, categories is not perfect, but this is the best I could do. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I'm going to focus my, uh, uh, my analysis on, on showing you how much the expenditure on each product change in each county, because this is uh, a way of computing what would be the change in demand for transportation. And I'll show you that you can actually compute where, what, what are the bilateral change in demand for transportation services uh, uh, after, this, uh, after this change. Okay, so this is a map of the Chinese market share uh, in textile by US county. What you tend to see from this graph is that uh, uh, metropolitan areas tend to have, a, in China tends to have a larger market share in the metropolitan areas than, than than it, has, uh, uh, than it has elsewhere. If you increase the productivity of manufacturing sector everywhere, okay, in all the manufacturing sectors in China, what the model is gonna suggest uh, is that the change in the market shares is larger in places where the, the initial market share was lower. Okay, and this is a, a, so darker colors there means larger change, larger percentage change in market share. This is an, a, 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 a kind of a feature of the model when, when the Chinese market share is very high already, it's harder to sell the marginal variety. And this is why uh, 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 penetration of Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, producers increases less in places where it was initially high. Now, obviously, these are market shares, but uh, uh, to, to compute the demand for transportation services, one needs to convert these things into millions of, uh, of dollars of, of, uh, of shipped bodies, right? And so the model can do that. And, uh, and, uh, and if you do that, this is the final, this is the final uh, 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 picture that you get. This is the, uh, um, showing you the change in expenditure on leather and leather products by US county in million dollars, okay? And so when you see green colors, that means the expenditure goes up. When you see red colors, that means the expenditure goes down. And in white, it basically hovers around zero. So it's, it's kind of a small number, right? And uh, uh, so the general feature that you find uh, in this simulation is that uh, things on the East Coast, expenditure on the East Coast tends to get a little higher. And, and uh, uh, in Florida, it tends to get a little higher. And Chicago also tends to get a little higher. And somewhere in the Midwest, it kind of depends on the... It kind of depends on the, on the sector, uh, uh, which, which states are going to be more impacted. But somewhere in the Midwest, expenditure tends to decrease, OK? And the way, uh, the way this relates to, to the transportation sector is that if expenditure on leather products goes up in the, in, the, uh, in the East Coast, that will mean that more stuff will need to be shipped, OK? And so this means that, uh, so demand for transportation services to uh, the East Coast uh, will go up, and demand for transportation services to uh, uh, those places in the Midwest will, uh, will go down. Uh, you, I have similar uh, pictures for the food industry. Uh, 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 what, five minutes? Okay. Uh, the, 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 um, the feature here is that it, it, 
expenditure tends to decrease in, 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 uh, in states like Iowa rather than in states like, like Michigan, uh, where in fact it, it uh, uh, goes up a little bit. Uh, if you look at mining and querying, that's an important industry uh, for, the, for the railroad, um, uh, for, the rail, for the transportation sector and for the railroad sector is in, in, in particular. Uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, these are the results that the model suggests. What I want to emphasize here is that what's happening is that the expenditure somewhere on the east, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, um, on the east seaboard of Texas is also going down, okay? And that is presumably because uh, whatever economic activity was going on in Texas is, is, uh, is, uh, is um, uh, reducing, and that also implies a reduction in the demand of these, uh, of these services. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is for chemicals and chemicals products. Um, uh, the, the picture that, that, that you find is uh, more or less the same. Uh, what I want to emphasize out of this picture is that you, the model can tell you where is the stuff coming from, okay, and where is the increasing expenditure uh, uh, coming from. If you look at Cook County in Chicago, that's, uh, uh, the model predicts an increase in $300 million uh, um, change in expenditure on chemicals products, okay, and that will, those products will need to be delivered. This is a net increase, obviously, but it could be the case that products, chemical products shipped from somewhere go down and chemicals products shipped from somewhere else go up. Right? And so you can ask, where are these products coming from? Where, are these, where is this net increase coming from? And, uh, and this is the result. Uh, what, what the model is suggesting is that the net, the net 300 million increase is a composition of much more sold that is produced on the East Coast and much less that is produced on the, on the Texas seaboard and uh, somewhere here in Wyoming and Idaho. Okay. Now, again, I can't tell you exactly why this is going on, a little bit because there are all sorts of general equilibrium effects that are uh, uh, moving all the pieces of, uh, of the model, and a little bit because I haven't had time to uh, analyze what are the main components of these drivers. Uh, uh, but this uh, uh, you know, is, a, is, a, is, is a way of showing an exploration of, of recent spatial quantitative uh, models of, uh, uh, of, uh, of trade that hopefully can help uh, get to the uh, uh, demand for transportation services that we talked about at the beginning of the panel discussion. Okay, so this is all I have. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks.